<laughs> the United States. Yeah. Not The Rock. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, the Rock's Absolute playing the full rock. story now, please. All right, guys, welcome back to the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Rick Shields. I'm here with producer Guy, episode number 96. Getting closer. We are getting close to 100. Just on that point, very quickly, before we introduce our wonderful guest today, for the 100th episode, we're doing it live. We have sold out the Lowry Theatre. Congrats. Congratulations. <laughs> we sold it out. Come, cannot believe it. Thanks for all your support. 450 tickets sold like that. So looking forward to everyone that's coming on the 9th of October. If you've got tickets, great. Welcome. We can't wait to see you. We'll definitely be sticking around for a few drinks afterwards. Um, if you didn't, unfortunately, I'm sure we may do more live episodes in the future. And the audio version will be live on Apple for you all to listen to. And there'll be a, a cool behind the scenes video coming to this channel very, very soon. Yeah, so I think you're going to get really look forward to that. So we've got a lot of planning to go ahead, but we are excited. And again, thanks for all your support. And all the profits will be going to a charity that's announced on the night. Our guest today yes. is somebody who I've been a big fan of even before I met her. Mm-hmm. I was lucky enough to bump into her one time at the driving range. And since that, I've been it's been a pleasure to call her my friend. Today, we have Carly Booth on the podcast. Carly, thanks for being on the podcast Pleasure to be here, Rick. I'm excited. Uh, No, it's great. Thank you for coming on. Um, It's funny because we've scheduled a two-hour window for this podcast, and you're saying you not might not. (laughs) We might only just scratch the surface, so we're going to try and cover as much as we can. But first off, I think it's a really nice opening. How would you describe yourself? You you bump into someone in the street. Go, hi, nice to meet you. What's your name and what do you do? Well, that's a funny one because. Some people take it seriously and some people don't. Like, take the, your job serious. Well, they just don't believe I'm a professional golfer. If I'm just walking and just say, yeah, I'm, hi, I'm Carly Booth. I, I play golf for a living. No, seriously, what do you? Is that what you like, get? Is that response you get? Seriously, what do you? And you go, no, no, I am. And I've won. Yeah, I play golf. And nah, I'm, pr- I'm pretty good. Nah. <laughs> I got friends that play golf. Nah. Like. <laughs> so they don't believe you? Never. Do you ever, no. make, a, do you make, ever make a different job title up? Just because you bought the same. No, I know golfer. people that do this, but I just don't have the the balls to do it. To be You're like a, dol- <laughs> a dolphin trainer or something like that. <laughs> I thought about saying like I'm an astronaut or like you know I'm a rally driver. If I wasn't a golfer, I'd always want to be something in some adrenaline kind of sport. You could have been a gymnast, right? Well, yeah, I could have, but my my career would have ended a long time ago. (laughs) I would have definitely broke my neck if I tried to do (laughs) gymnastics. Um, I want to fire things off. Guy, you've got some quick fire questions for Carly. Yeah, we've not done this for a while, Carly, but sometimes when we have a guest on, we've got like eight or nine kind of either or um, questions. So you can either just shoot off the bat and just say the answer straight away, or if you want to elaborate, that's also cool. So the first one, nine holes or the driving range? Nine holes, 100%. More fun? Well, I that's how I used to play growing up. I'd play nine holes with like two, three balls. And I'd actually, literally, this is something I really did do when I was a kid. I'd have three golf balls because I couldn't drive. I was so young. So dad would just drop me off at the golf course. There you go. I'll pick you up in like three hours before mobile phones or anything. So I'd play me against Annika Sorensen and Tiger Woods. That's class. <laughs> That's what I would do. You used to win. Well, <laughs> you always won. I mean, I'd hope I'd always win, but sometimes it actually wasn't the case. But I'd always tell myself I was the winner. That's a good way of doing it. I think I might know the answer to this one before I even ask it after what you said to Rick off camera before. But Netflix or YouTube? Definitely. <laughs> I know. I know it hurts. <laughs> And are you, a, are you a drama person, a series person, or films? I'm more of a series. Yeah, I am, to be honest. Again, this one I think has been answered by what you've just said there, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Tiger or Jack Nicholas? I think Tiger because that's who I grew up watching and that's who I kind of looked up to. Jack Nicholas is a little bit of a era before, mm-hmm. but still an absolute legend. Have you had a chance to meet Jack or Tiger? Neither. Oh, I felt like you'd have rubbed shoulders. Well, I mean, he did, like, Tiger did wave at me once at did the Ryder Cup, but that was about it. When you were... And then I did watch him win at Augusta live. At, um, 2019. That pretty amazing. Did you? Yeah. Oh, my... We just heard, as a spectator, or were you working? Um, I had a, an event of just hosting people, 
So um, someone that you guys might know, Bob Mannery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we had a really great group of people, a uh, fun week, but it was just amazing to see You Tiger. were with Bob? Yeah, I was with Bob. Well, not literally with Bob, but, you know, <laughs> he is. Him. He is a character. Absolute legend. He's actually just currently got the number one podcast. I was listening to that literally on the way here this morning. If you don't know he Bob Mannery. so funny. It's a, a definite over 18 warning is needed but listen to our podcast content. first of course, listen to his. of course um driving or putting well i think you know all i mean i like to drive it's all always been something that i'm like i've always been quite a long hitter and something i'm more of the stronger parts of my game but putting is definitely where i've struggled and i know that's where the money is made so it's uh, something I'm constantly working on. But you'd probably choose driving. Yeah, it's more fun. <laughs> Do you think then, there's obviously a big debate, certainly in both men's and, and women's game, but how obviously important distance is now? Do you think it is as important as what we're getting told it is? Or do you still, like you said, then you think it's all about putting and, and literally getting the ball in the hole? I think on the, on like the PGA, like they're hitting it so far. Like it's almost a joke mm. in a sense. Um but, you know, it's consistency, accuracy, and getting the, the ball in the hole. So, I mean, it always comes down to putting. Do you think if you can drive it, obviously you're a phenomenal driver of the golf ball, you almost don't consider that as much of a strength because you can al- already do it almost. And therefore, you see putting as something that you definitely need to improve on. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we can always be better at every aspect of our game. It's It's, it's a sport that you're consistently trying to get better. Even the best are still trying to get better. But f- f- for the likes of even watching the British Open, like Bryson hits it so far, but he's hitting it in the rough. Mm. Even though he's closer, it's it's no advantage. Because yeah. you'd rather be shorter on the fairway and then you have a better like attempt to get closer to the to the pin because coming out the rough, you can't control it the same. Oh, that's so I true. think fairways are just our key thing. I mean, we can all hit it far enough. Mm-hmm. So it's like whether that 20 extra yards is really worth it sometimes. You're a long hitter, aren't you? I feel like you are from the videos of Sim with Rick as well. You can get it out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How old's your average? Do you know your average carry? It used to be a lot longer now because I've obviously had a shoulder operation, but it used to be about a 260 carry. Wow. Not Not as much now, but... Where would that rank you on the LET, 260 carry? I was always... Top kind of five ish, top really? ten, yeah. Wow. Um, and but now, like, obviously, this is my first season back from my operation, so it's a little bit different. But yeah, driving was always one of my strongest. Mm. Okay, last of these little questions then. First app you open in the morning? Usually WhatsApp, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Then probably Instagram, then my emails. And then it's like back to WhatsApp, Insta. That's that's my routine. It's like what app do you open? Well, I open uh, WhatsApp first, well, and it's like round in a circle it's forever. Usually, what's there yeah. when I wake up and see what I need to answer? Or what notification? Are you, yeah. are you are you on your phone a lot? Like Rick, you, literally, on, as we speak, on this, like Rick's horrendous. I'm literally just checking. I, I, I'm not even checking Rick, anything. Rick's just checking his Apple Pay still <laughs> works. You know, do you know what? It's just a habit everyone gets into. Yeah, and especially like as someone that travels so much, and you're generally on your own. Like you go to your phone because that's that's where your friends are. That's where everything's happening. And you know, yeah. unless you're watching Netflix yeah. or YouTube, <laughs> you're usually chatting to people or FaceTiming or speaking with family or friends. I feel like you don't even have a. Do you have? Do you even have a YouTube account? I think I tried to start <laughs> one like two years ago, and I didn't really get very far <laughs> i think youtube's one of those things that like i honestly watch so much youtube not even golf related just all sorts i think you're either in that world or you're not I like yeah. i know some like american youtubers and stuff who i deem as like unbelievable celebrities whereas like my wife would have a clue they are and it's like you either live in that world yeah. or you just don't have any yeah, interest no, I, I totally agree with that and there's a, there's a few crossovers now we're starting to see with youtubers yeah. becoming a bit more mainstreamed like have you heard of ksi no. He's kind of the musician. He's doing a lot more music stuff now. He did a bit of boxing. Surprises me, actually, because he's gone from YouTuber to kind of like much more mainstream celeb. Not heard of him. Need to get out more, Carly. 
I bet you've danced to his tunes. No, I have not. Oh, I've not danced in ages. That's it's true. Obviously, COVID. You do like dancing now. I love dancing. You're a good dancer. I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't. Here, have you been working on your uh, singing skills since my golf day? Oh, my God. Right. So, Come on, let's hear this. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, it, I hate, I must admit, I hated this. So I did embarrass it, him a little bit. I feel like it was four years ago or three. It was 2018. 18. Three years ago. Mm-hmm. The, the famous 2018. Yeah, that, Rick had a good year in 2018, which we'll come on to after maybe. <laughs> it was August. Until he sang. <laughs> yeah, it went all the way Back end of August, and Carly said, I'm running a golf day. Would you love to attend? I thought, I'd love to attend. It was one, one of my favourite golf courses. I think Stockport. I actually remember you going to this. Stockport Golf Club, Great one of my fa- favourite golf courses. Had a wonderful day. Played with Lee Sharp, who's a yeah. Man United legend. Really enjoyed it. Um, and afterwards, we had a nice little kind of... Um, like not gala dinner, it was quite relaxed. It was a small gathering, more so. But everyone was suited and booted, right? And Carly, you on the Guinness. I was on the Guinness. Carly had put some great entertainment on. We had like Patty McGuinness there, like some nice. really good people, and so, of course my legendary brother Paul. Yeah. So, um, uh, Cole Page, who's a singer, who is Mason Page's dad. Who, uh, you've met Mason a few, a few times before. Oh yeah, he's been on a few videos as well. He's up there singing. He's bloody brilliant, right? He's singing all these fantastic, like, Sinatra songs and all this. And next thing, I get a tap on the shoulder. He's behind me. Tap on the shoulder. Stand up. Stand up, he's saying to me. I'm like, oh, my God, please don't tell me he's going to get me to sing. And everyone's laughing, and Carly's got a phone out, and Hannah Davis was there with a phone out, thinking, oh, crap, I'm in front of a lot of people here, including Paddy McGuinness and you guys and loads of other people, thinking oh my, he's gonna get me to sing so he stands up and he's singing uh my way i think it was frank sinatra my me way and mrs jones oh me and mrs jones <laughs> <laughs> so he starts singing his line and he, he puts the mic to me now i'm a born performer guy you are you in every capacity of two, my life two gcds at school didn't you uh pe and uh, <laughs> drama so i i am born for stage <laughs> I'm not born for I've singing. I've never seen you go so red. <laughs> oh my. Because it was really <laughs> awful. It was absolutely awful. Um, what's really funny is sometimes if I'm singing to like my kids at night when it's like bedtime. What's the go-to song at night? I'm not singing it now. Baby Shark. <laughs> There's a couple that I'll, I'll blast out. And honestly, in, in a moment when it's dark and I've got my eyes shut and I'm singing to my kids, I'm actually pretty mm. decent at singing. <laughs> Some level of talent there. <laughs> <laughs> that talent eluded me at this moment in time and it was horrendous. It was like I need, I was, to, need to see this clip. It was like I was strangling a cat. Oh, it's great. I love it. A couple of people later, Paddy McGuinness gets up. His was just, just. I he bet just, he can sing, can he? He just knocked out the park. No, he just knocked out the park. Just confident and just killed. He just it. absolutely. No, he didn't it. say anything. He just literally said, "I can feel your penis in my back." <laughs> oh, he did. did he not sing? No. I thought it's. Oh, why did I go with the penis in the back? <laughs> well, you also not your penis, so uh, well, it makes sense. unfortunately, he wasn't standing right behind you. It's actually to your side. So uh, it's in my side. Yeah, so that that was funny, but no, that was that was a good fun day. Um, wow, well, every podcast we have now, we end up talking about your penis and some capacity <laughs> every single week. Just want to get the views up. <laughs> um, anyway, so. We've got, on. <laughs> we've got Cal on the podcast. Yes. You are, if I'm correct, a three-time winner on the Ladies European Tour. Um, you've been on the European Tour for like 10 years now, is it, coming up to? This is my 12. 12, so 12 years. So you're an OG on the Ladies European I'm, Tour. I'm very old. Um, I didn't say old, OG. Um, but with the podcast, we normally start off with literally the simple question of tell us how you got into golf, how you started golf, and let's just go on a journey to where we are today. <sighs> well, where do I start? So, um... I grew up on a farm. Um, I've got two older brothers. My older brother plays golf. I got into golf really through him. My dad was a silver medalist for wrestling. He kind of... Silver medalist in the Olympics? Yeah, uh, Commonwealth Games. Oh, wow, when, which one? When, um, God, let's go back Oops. way back. Like 60s, 70s. Okay. My dad's 84 this month. Oh, is he? Wow. Yeah. So I'm, I'm twenty. When I say I'm old, I'm only 29. Which I think is old, but I'm still, old. I'm still under it's 30. Not old. You're exactly. under 30. Until then. Um, so he just kind of, well, my whole, my mom and my dad, like, literally just, as soon as we were born, like, into the gym, like, made us try every sport possible. Like, I was really good at gymnastics, swimming. Um, Wallace was really good at, my oldest brother, 
who turned professional, uh, really good at squash, wrestling as well. He was like British under 18 champion for wrestling as well. So we're just a really sporty family, but he chose golf. Then I kind of followed in his footsteps. And how old were you at this point? I think I was about 10 where I had to do, well, I got, when I was eight, actually, I got my first handicap, which was 20. Okay. Wow. Which seemed to be like a world record at it's the pretty time. Good, that, isn't it's pretty good, that, So I just kind of stood out a little bit at that point. And, uh, and did you, at uh, eight-year-old, did you realise you were really good at golf at that time? No, I just I just went to do what I had to do, and that was it. W- like, was it because really also you had, obviously, your older brothers. Was it the fact that you weren't as good as Wallace yet, that you maybe didn't think you were that good, for example? Possibly, yeah. Like, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be probably as good as I got so young and so quickly because I had someone to look up to and constantly just I always find anything you do like if you've got someone that's kind of pushing you or making you work harder or be better it's always great to be around absolutely so uh yes so you're you're on a farm in (laughs) Scotland (laughs) Where, where in Scotland um just 12 miles west of Glen Eagles. Okay, so it's like that Stirling area. That is about 25 minutes from okay. there. So, so, so right in the middle of Scotland, basically. Kind of, if you if you think of Stirling and Perth, it's like kind of in between. Okay. So Glen Eagles, just a little bit west. I get you. So you're on, you're on a farm, you're eight year old, you've just got a 20, 20 handicap, your brother's playing well, you're trying loads of different sports. You've mentioned gymnastics. And I know you, you were really into gymnastics. Yeah, I was a gymnast for Scotland from age eight to 10 for under 12s. Wow. And then um, I think as well, it's just when you're kind of competing in too many different sports, you kind of have to decide which sport you want to excel at. Because I couldn't, I, there was not enough days no, in the exactly. week. So. And your mum and dad must have been taxi drivers. Literally, that's all they were. <laughs> because again, if you're on a farm, I'm guessing it's quite rural. I'm guessing Very. you're not close to things. It was 25 minutes to gymnastics or 30 minutes to swimming. That's crazy. Golf. Like my dad took me all over the UK. He literally drove everywhere. Um, wow. So, I mean, I'm so thankful for all the opportunities that they gave me. And that's probably where I excelled quite young. Um, and then um, from there, that was kind of my decision at about age 10. And then 12, I, you would say that I kind of came more into the media was when I won that um, British Masters with Sandy Lyle. Yeah. Uh, that was. 2004, I think. Well, one thing it says here that I don't know if this is, this is on Wikipedia, so it might be incorrect, but it said that you became the youngest ladies' club champion in Britain at the age of 11. Oh, yeah. I you just that. Com- <laughs> missed that all. <laughs> Oops. So you were 11. Oh, yeah, I forgot about being <laughs> club champion. This was at Dunblane so New, I, was it? Well, I was a member at three clubs. So Dunblane, Octorarder, which is the course next door to Glen Eagles, and Comrie, my local. And I won all three that year. 11? Shut uh, 11. Up. And can you remember like what scores you were, was it scratch to take it with being club well, champs or? Well you, like I guess you do the um, qualify to, mm-hmm. the, to the last whatever and then it's match play. Ah uh, okay. Ah right. So it, yeah it was match play. That's and you fantastic. won three in a year at the age of 11. Yeah, I, that's why the women didn't like me. It, did, did you find that? Serious yeah. question, did you find that? Uh, yeah. Wow. So you found that there was some kind of tension or they, they didn't want a junior winning or was it the fact they didn't want a junior girl winning or what what was it that they kind of didn't like um, someone new there there's a few things where i'd love to show you but i can't show you right now where um i did a couple of things on the tv for even helping as junior girls where like my dad would drive me all the way to the south of scotland and he can watch me play. He wouldn't let parents go on the golf course. Right. So I'm playing like Scottish under 18s at age 10. Oh my goodness, on your own? On my own. And he can go and watch. So they wouldn't let parents go on the course. There's a public footpath. There's a few um, really great things I actually did at that age, which really changed a big insight and it kind of helped grow, I think, Scottish golf girls like what what did you do break down barriers well i 
<laughs> you'd have to watch it <laughs> so you got what a tv program where can no it was just i've got it on like i've got it on my phone on it was on a vcr that my mom's then sent me because she's gone through the vcrs to put on dvd to then <laughs> no way then i filmed it and it's crazy how you look back then and you see how much progress women's golf especially has changed so were you quite vocal in saying that this isn't right at that age i think that's where my dad was very vocal okay. <laughs> he has no filter do you, do you know i was a, a, a wrestler do you know i was a limp, <laughs> olympic like, silver do you not wrestler know who you're talking to <laughs> is it was he a big big fella you didn't want to mess with him well, he was a bouncer for the Beatles for three years. What? And he owned nightclubs. He, he was, was a bouncer for the Beatles. Oh my, my dad God. was not someone you'd mess with. Wow, that's like, incredible. Yeah, he'd knock people out with his head. <laughs> he, had a, he, had, he had like a 21 one inch neck. <laughs> oh my word. Quite so, funny. So he wasn't happy. There's little Carly. He always tells me stories about the kind of nightclub days. Because he, he's from Aberdeen but moved... To Liverpool at like 17 for a job and then just joined a gym and that's where the wrestling all kind of started but got a job working as a bouncer and then when he he owned a club called the checkers club and then my mom came to work for him she's she's 15 years younger so that's how they met and um he used to say about the stories of like gangs he wouldn't like gangs and my my parents are proper teetotal don't drink no. smoke where um like so he he would always be the the doorman on his on his club and so so he know he would know who is coming in and coming out like no 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 so then like he'd always he had a really nice car but he'd always have a really like crappy car right like we drive to the club because no one's gonna look at that i get you because People would actually... Would, if, if he got turned away, smash he'd go in, and smash his uh, car up. Yeah. Smash in the nicest cars. Oh, my goodness. And then there was a time where he said he didn't let this gang come in. And they've waited for him outside the back. I mean, I don't know how realistic my dad, <laughs> my dad likes to, you know, blase. Of course, but, you, you've, got to, you've got to say the fish that you caught. I'm going with it. Yeah, you've, got to, you've, got to, you've got to have a bit of a fish tail every now and again. Yeah. You've got to say the fish that you caught was a whopper. So go on, all yes. these guys were ha waiting for your dad. So there's like the back alleyway and he's like, I've gone out with the bins. <laughs> and then these, these like five, six guys are waiting for me. And he goes, right, well, the only thing I can do now is back myself into the corner and take one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> oh, my God. And he Knocks did. One-on-one. <laughs> because -on -one. he's like, like, well, I know they all can't come at me at yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, no one can get you back. No yeah, it's like Jackie Chan. Literally. It's like a Jackie Chan film. <laughs> I'm lost for words. You're always supposed to say you're supposed to go for the biggest one first, aren't you? I don't know, the you're, you're the man who knows this You're supposed to stuff. go for the biggest, hardest one first. And or, then you get knocked out and you don't feel any pain after <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> That's why bringing a boy home was never easy. <laughs> <God. I bet. laughs> so, so after all this rock and roll lifestyle of your dad, that's when he ended up getting a farm in Scotland and going back home. But what's yeah. the one set? We've missed out the Beatles there. He was the bodyguard well, for the Beatles. Yeah. Like, he, yeah, for three years. And then they went to go to America, wanted him to go with him. Well, with them, but he turned them down to because he was training for the Olympics. Does he have any like mad memorabilia at home then of anything from the Beatles? But still, like we, he had his house broken into, and a lot of that got stolen. Oh actually. my! But so oh we, we had stuff that was from like John yeah, Lennon or whatever. Loads of that. Oh wow. my god, that Which must been heartbreaking. Sad for him, yeah. Big time. That's crazy. Oh my word! <laughs> that was really cool. Um, yeah. And I then I have a Down syndrome brother that won four gold medals for being a powerlifter. I know. Well, to that's dive to into do with the golf day that you came to. Yeah, so. yeah. Because that that helped fund it, didn't it? Yeah. So tell us a bit more. In 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 Paralymp well in the Paralympics or sorry, he's Special Olympics. So there's two things. There's a, there's a mental disability and there's obviously a physical disability. Ju just sorry, just quick one. Just explain that just in case people missed it. So this is is he your. Is he older? Still older brother? I'm the youngest, so okay. he's the middle one. Yeah, so he's called Paul. Called Paul. He has Down syndrome. Um, and he, well, he actually first went to the Special Olympics for swimming and got um, two bronze medals. 
Right. Then Amazing. decided, I don't want to swim. I want to, like, be a powerlifter. Oh, my goodness. So then he's gone into powerlifting, and he's gone to the Special Olympics, which the first thing I did was actually do a skydive in Dubai to raise money. You did that? I did that. And that was back in 2014, I think. Um, because, again, there's no funding. There's no grants. So at least there was something that I could do to help towards even just their tracksuits, their uniforms. Of course. Um, or whatever kind of equipment they needed. And he went there and won four gold medals. Then I did another... Well, then I started doing... I've done two golf days now. So that was to raise money for the LA World Games. Yeah. And he went and won a gold and a bronze. That's so good. Cool. And then he decided, class. I'm retiring now. I want to be a coach. And then he said he wants to be a singer and wants Get some me tips to be off his. <laughs> <laughs> can I be his band manager? And I'm like, oh my God. Oh. Or you can be a singer. I don't mind. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. That's I'm incredible. like, I know someone that might be great for yeah. our band. Co- Cole Page. <laughs> Um, that's amazing so so i mean you've really come from an incredibly sporty family massively and then wallace i mean i can't not talk about my oldest brother um you know he won all this one of the best amateurs throughout scotland he was walker cup really um finished i think it was third or fourth in the individual in the world up against like Ricky Fowler and then they won the, the world championships wow. to beat America and all that so yeah and then he was British wrestling champion under 18s he played squash for Scotland like I mean just this is bad we should have got the whole booth family on. I know that could be the follow-up <laughs> like podcast said, might be more than two hours <laughs> we um, talk about the whole family <laughs> I mean that that is phenomenal so <clears throat> your brother was doing well he was obviously starting to you know win things how how many how many years older is he than you? Wallace is seven. Paul is two and a half. So seven, you know, you were eleven. Wallace was eighteen. You're winning all these club championships at the age of eleven, which is like record breaking. You had your big brother to look up to um, from a golf, certainly a golf standpoint. Wallace, and then kind of when did it? When did Carly really realise that? Yeah, you know what, golf is definitely for me. I want to go down this route of becoming a professional golfer. I think it was probably around that time, like 11, 12. And then, um, you know, I got kind of picked. I played in my first home internationals at age 12. Yeah. And then I went to America at 14. At so 14 you went to America? Yeah. Well, got um, Well, I won the Duke of York, the Scottish under-18s. Duke of York, um, he started a school in London that, he asked my dad if I would be willing to maybe go to, but I already accepted a scholarship to America. Wow. And where, where did you go to in America? Um, I did one year at IMG Academies. And, and where, where was that? That was in Bradenton, Florida. Okay. And then I did a foreign exchange in Arizona. So those two years, but then I got picked, being in America, I got picked for the Kurtz Cup. So I was 15 and that was... As we were speaking about earlier, St. Andrew's old course. Wow. Youngest ever to be picked That's for Great Britain, Ireland at 15. So and what was it like at 14 you, when you went to America? Was that on your own? God, I put on so much weight. <laughs> you didn't. At 14, you wouldn't have done. I did. I just found a love for cookies. <laughs> super, cookies. super sized everything over in the US. Oh, it was the right shock. So, so you're 14. You, you didn't go out with your parents? No, I went on my own. What the hell? And did you get obviously well looked after? Was it? Um, it was like a, I think there's two ways to look at it. It's it made me grow up really quickly. I bet. And also, yeah, I m- I met so many people. And was there any other superstar names in that class? Yeah, Corda sisters. What the well, really? Jessica. Um, you know, I used because it's a sport for five people. So, for example, um. What do you, what do you mean? You it's, a, seem, it's a sport uh, for five people. Sorry, <laughs> it's a sport of five sports. Five sports. Five sports at a college, at a school. At a school. Okay. So sorry, um, baseball, uh, basketball, tennis, golf, and soccer. Okay. Uh, we know it's football. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, 
I would see like Maria Sharapova training what? at this time, uh, Paula Creamer at the oh time. Oh my goodness. Uh, Jessica Corda was kind of in the same time as me. And um, yeah, there's a f- few others I could name. And w- was this a all girls school or was the f- no no mix, or is there mix, as well? Mix. So any was there any big f- male pros that we might know of now? Um, not that I can think of. I think a lot of people have come and gone through it. I get you. How long was this for then? If you were fourteen, I, I only went there for a year, and okay. then I went to Arizona. So going to Arizona, I did like a like a foreign exchange. So I just went to a public high school, worked with a, a coach, and I'd play like quite a lot of the AJGA, which is known as the amateur tournaments there. And I was like playing a lot with like Cheyenne Woods. Wow. Like so, it's it was it was a great experience to kind of see that kind of level of the the field of uh, well, 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 what's going on in America as well as obviously playing in Europe. Of course, well, you, you obviously you're doing great at club level. You win club championships, so, so you kind of pass that level. You've then doing really well at the home nations, things like that. You've then got to test yourself at well, what, what's the world offering? And you look at yeah. United States as that as probably being the benchmark to, to aim for, really. But in that time frame, like, we're not homesick. We're not, like, lonely. Very, very. It's a, it's a bizarre, like, did your parents come and visit you much? Did you no. go back home and visit much? No, I went to four different high schools in five years. So you were out there for five, five years, 14 to how old were you when you left America then? I left when I came back for Curtis Cup. So that was just before I turned 16. Okay. And then I finished my A-levels in Scotland. Um, but then I got my tour card while I was still in school. At what age? At 17. So I was in my last year of school doing my A-levels. I thought, I'll go to Q School because this is where I had the predicament. Do I go to like college for four years do I try and turn pro early that was always something that I wasn't sure of but I kind of was feeling I've had quite a lot of experience with the two years I had in America it was almost like my thought was like that's my college experience even though it was not college so I just kind of thought well I'm gonna go to Q school see where my game's at or kind of have a feel of where or what I need to to do or improve and um i got my card straight away and i was like oh crap <laughs> i've got to go back to school <laughs> oh my god and uh like i'd miss weeks at a time so my like yeah school was really hard to to complete but i got my three a, le- a levels um so that was good i bet i bet it was hard for a number of reasons obviously moving schools loads missing your family Playing loads of golf, trying to get good at golf. Like, there's lots going on there. Never New really city, made a country. group of friends. Yeah, that, that's quite hard. Like when you look back at it now, I mean, at the time, did you enjoy it, or, or did you find it kind of not particularly nice? I think it's you just know what you know at the time. Like you don't know any different. Yeah. So you just know you're there to do something. I think as you get a little bit older, and then especially when I went to a more normal high school, it was kind of like, I always remember even younger, like coming home from gymnastics and you'd see like kids hanging out on a bus stop and you'd like, I quite envy those kids. You never did that really. I actually envied them. Yeah. And now I'm thinking, you know, all of that hard work has been worth it. And sometimes I think, I wish I worked harder. Yeah. When you, you know, it's, it's really well documented that like growing up, Tiger Woods was obsessed with Jack Nicholas. He'd have like his age and his handicap written down. He'd always trying to beat him and beat him in the tournaments that he played in. Obviously, you said earlier on that you you really like looked up to Annika. Did you, we as a kind of youngster at fourteen, fifteen, were, were you thinking like you thinking like Annika was doing X at this age? I want to be doing that, or I want to be as good as she was at this age and beating what she did in these tournaments? Or were you just kind of quite chilled? Were, were you super competitive? I was very competitive, but I never really thought about what anyone else was doing. So if I was just, if I was going to a tournament, I just knew I wanted to win. Mm-hmm. That was it. That's That was my pure focus. And I think sometimes now it's like, I wish I let, I, th- I thought less mm-hmm. about the outside things. 
Because mm. now, as a pro, there's a lot more to it. You start to kind of think about it more. And it's like, you kind of wish you were your kind of amateur mindset sometimes, where you, you're you a bit more feel it, fearless. Well, as a pro, you, you're playing for your livelihood. Yeah, and it's, it, it's, it's, how, it's how, you, yeah, how you make money. It's how you get into the next tournament. It's where you rank yeah. for, for getting into certain events and things like that. So it, there's, there's much more pressure compared to just playing your amateur game where, you you know, it was much more relaxed and easy, really. So 17, you turned professional. And this is the thing. I think that was where there was a lot of pressure on me, like, to do well so quickly. And I think that's where I just, it took me two years before I, like one to really find my feet because I think I put so much pressure on myself to please everyone mm. and I just knew I had the potential but it's like oh my god I don't want to let anyone down of now you've got sponsors it's like oh like I don't want to upset anyone I can't play bad so I think you know you get a bit overwhelmed especially being young as well so I think it was a lot of learning yeah and you know as a golfer you 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 learn you keep learning of course even at this age now so you took you two years to win your first event was that a scottish open was it it was that's incredible that was an amazing feeling it was and especially having my mom and my brother were there watching yeah they were amazing. There watching. that's a good one to win as your first event but yeah. then again if, if this is you and won, I, I actually got an invite for that so you won off an invite yeah wow, wow. and then you won the next month am i right in thinking so I just had in my head, it was weird because, you know, when, well, I, prior, just prior to winning the Scottish Open, I won an LET Access Series, yeah. which is the tour below, which I thought I'll go just do some practice there. Well, not practice, but just play because I hadn't been playing and I won that. So I think that just gave me a little bit of a boost to see where my game was at and also just give me a little bit of confidence to go into the Scottish. So I was playing well, won that, and then... Weirdly enough, it's crazy how much the mind can make such an influence when you play golf. And I was like, I've got less than a month now to win again before I turn 20. Is that, so that's what you so were thinking? I was like, I want to do it one more time before I turn 20. And the, la- the final week before I turned 20 was the Swiss. So I actually ended up winning. But... <laughs> it was my first hole in one on tour. My first ever hole in one. Was it really? <laughs> first time that I played with Laura Davis, which was someone I always wanted to Legend, play with. Yeah. And I won in the fourth playoff hole with an eagle. What? Yeah, oh so my it was goodness. it was a very, very memorable Dramatic. Week. And <laughs> yeah. I was very tired after that one. <laughs> what what's you know, that first win and obviously you know, it was what now? It was 10 years ago, your first win. 2012, yeah. That was four rounds as well, wasn't it? Because a lot of these other ones are three. Um, Apparently on here. Scottish was three. Uh, Switzerland was four. Yeah. And then the Czech I won, we've not got two, but that one. My recent one in 2019 was three. So that first win, Scottish Open, like, is it? Is it almost, how, how do you s- describe how you feel after that win? Do you know, it doesn't really sink in. Until like later, yeah. Almost, almost when you look back at it, even now, as such. Yeah, I think um, then it was. Do you know the the biggest thing for me was like that relief. Yeah. It was like this big weight off my shoulders, and then Swiss was just an enjoyable one. Yeah, you the know? cherry on the cake. The, yeah, pretty much that, and then the most emotional I've ever been as the one I won in, in Czech in 2019 because it took me seven years to win again. And you had my mate on the bag. I had Andy Carter there. Who was just recently, we actually never even spoke about I, this. You know what, when a he left I was annoyed. and he won't let it go. <laughs> we, we had him on the podcast, our last guest was Carter. Yeah, two and episodes Somebody ago. actually commented on the video at when it went live and said, I can't believe it mentioned the win on the bag and I thought, why did we no, not mention that? Crazy. Yeah, one hit wonder. That's a good re- record. One one hit wonder. Did one right tournament, then, one win. He did great. Honestly, we, do you know, we went there and just had fun. And I think that's that the, the key. Thing. That was the key. I think sometimes you go in there with too much thought, too much pressure, too much got to do this, got to do that. You know what? We just, you know what? We 
just literally had fun. We've well, just done that then, because there's been a lot of talk, obviously, recently with like Rory and his caddy, Harry Diamond, being a good friend. Obviously, he's a great golfer. I think it's like a plus five handicap golfer, so he can play golf. But there's kind of, it feels at the moment, there's almost like two types of caddy on tour. There's the super kind of traditional caddy who's well known for being a caddy for 20 years. And there's people who, who like. whispers just the right thing in your ear when you need it. Yeah. Who's like a trained caddy. And then there's the, other, the other kind feels like it's somebody's mate they've got on the bag or, or the wife. I mean, it's a bit but, like Andy with you. It's a bit like Liam, Liam Harrison, Harrison with Dan Gavin, yeah. who we spoke about recently. Like I say, Westwood's wife, who, and Westwood had, has had, had a fantastic son as well, hasn't it? Yeah. season since having that on so, the bag. So do you think that they, ob- they obviously do, but they both must work. Like having an established caddy obviously works, which obviously like a Steve Williams has proved with Tiger for countless majors. But equally having a friend on the racks you can also really help. I think every player is different and every player wants something different. I mean, that's the, the main thing. I know as a person that I just want someone there to have a laugh with who, you know, obviously does or knows your game. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's more of when they pick you up when you're down and know what to say in that sense. Um, so, yeah, like a friend is more something because I, I know how like I'm the one hitting the golf shop. Like, everyone says, oh, you blame the caddy, you blame the caddy. But actually, it's you have to take responsibility for the shots you take. They're there to help you. They're not there to not, they're not going to, you know. They can't per- make you do they're it, not, can they? They're, they're, hit the they're not going to purposely yeah. tell you Im- advice that's wrong yeah. because, obviously, it's a benefit for them if you play well. So, you know, unfortunately, we all, we're just human. But I think what works, especially with, like, you see with Lee, like, he's just happy. Yeah. He's he's with the person he wants to be around. And, you know, he's just, it's uplifting. And, you know, he, know, he knows how to play golf. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's more of, like, the person that he wants to chat to, he wants to have a laugh with, yeah. who he wants next to him. Like, I remember also playing at Wentworth at a Gary Player Invitational, and I played with Jason Day. So his caddy... For a long time, has been his coach, best friend, and you know that's just it works. Yeah. So or you have like DJ has his brother, mm-hmm. for example. Yeah, Justin, but then, yeah. but then Bryson probably wouldn't have his best mate on the bag. Bryson wants somebody who's scientist gonna give him, almost. He's going to give him. You know, you need to know these numbers almost. Yeah, almost. Yeah. This is this is a a proper proper job. Don't make me laugh. We're it, in, we're yeah. in a work mode. His, his brain doesn't work. It, it, it's well, it works a little bit differently <laughs> to most. It, his brain works much more advanced than most, yeah, most people. He's so. like, like, yeah, streets ahead. <laughs> like, we can't keep up. <laughs> so, 2019, that was that was your win, and that gave you an exemption then for LET for a period of time. Yeah, it did for for two years. So you said 19. Then do you mean the 12 one, or do you mean the 19 one? 2019. 19, yeah. yeah. So the current one. Yeah. yeah. So what did the first one get you then that we won in 2012? Did that well, give you? Well, because I won twice that year gave me three year exemption ah do you always get to play in the scottish open because you've won it um good question i hope so <laughs> <laughs> if not i hope i get an invite <laughs> but you you played in it this year didn't yeah you? yeah no i played this year we played at dunbarney first time ever playing that was an awesome i've heard golf it's amazing yeah, it's heard very it's amazing. new but i amazing met uh, i met the uh, guy called clive who designed the golf course recently in st andrews and he was really proud of it he said it's yeah. like one of the best patches of land he's ever he's ever been blessed to be able to use as a canvas for a golf course really it does look quite quite exceptional how do you and it obviously you've been pro now since 2000 and if my math is right 10 yeah december 2009 when i got my card yeah how do you stay motivated? How do you stay committed to it? How do you, how, what, what drives you? Well, I mean, it's the love of the game, isn't it? As well as the ups and downs. I mean, it, it is a lifestyle of highs and lows. And, you know, it's the highs that keep going, really. Yeah. So, yeah, there's times where I hate it, but there's something there that just makes you want to, find that you know there's nothing more or that feeling that we it's what we work for every single day is that feeling of that win and And nothing beats it and 
again, is it the win that absolutely keeps you committed or is it a, a really strong season? So like a really, really good finish on like the order of merit or something. It's a mixture of both, really. It's it's nice to play a season where you're just playing solid golf. I think that keeps your emotions more level, yeah. which is actually quite a nice thing. It's more yeah, yeah. relaxing in that sense. But, you know, the win's obviously a big thing. Of course. But it's nice to have a level and a win. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. that's, that's <laughs> what the idea is, is to play well consistently and have I'll a win. I'll say Tony Fee now this year. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> the other thing as well, obviously, on the course you've had great success and, I, and I'm, you'll definitely have more success moving forward. We all, we all know that. You were one of the first kind of real pioneers that really embraced social media, I feel. Um, I don't know really necessarily, but... Like, did you always... did When social media started to come out, was it a conscious effort to be on social media and to promote yourself? Or was it something that you got advised to do? Or, you know, because I feel like I knew about you probably much more than I would do many other people because I live on the world of social media. Yeah, like, you know, even like when we first met way back. What were you, well, it was at Trafford. It was probably yeah. about 2014 or, or 15. Well, what, yeah. what was strange was... A year before that, so I followed you on. I was following you on Instagram, and a year before that, you were in Australia, right. and you were about a month behind me because I'd been in Australia, and you went to a driving range that I'd been at weirdly with artificial turf. You might not remember oh, it, right. and a big tiger in the middle of it. And I remember, oh, it's mad! Like we almost run these kind of parallel lives. I knew you were kind of living in the northwest at that time. You were playing golf. You were dead in social media. I just knew at some point our paths would collide, and it was at Trafford that time when you came down practicing. Um, but I, I just feel like not many female golfers, golfers in, in as a whole, was really utilising social media. But you really were. Like your Instagram was definitely way above most people's. I think at that point, I never really thought about it. But again, even since then, especially after meeting you with like doing the YouTube stuff, I realised actually how much like the world's going in this direction. Yeah. So... And then especially now, like, you know, with whatever, you know, particular sponsors that might be cropping up or events or everything is kind of social media involved. Yeah. So it's just, I think from that moment, I didn't realize until like the last kind of, you know, five, six years where how much the world is enhancing in that direction. I felt like you always gave a really good insight to your life through social media i think i maybe just did that naturally because yeah. i never had anyone to tell me to do that you weren't advised to do that's that. good that you had that foresight because like i think we said this before off camera like obviously the best golfs in the world on both tours men's or women's are the best golfs in the world but you need it, it, the ones that seem to get a following whether it be on social media or you know actually on the golf course the ones that you, you you find yourself attached to, for whatever reason it could be, the personality, like Beef, obviously, Sevy in the day, you know, these characters. And I think by, like you have done, by utilising social media, and even by, I'm looking here now, one of the first videos you and Rick did was May 2015. And I'm going to show you a picture and make you laugh at this. But by even doing that, whether you, obviously you at the time didn't even really think much about it other than it'll just be a bit of fun, that unlocked more eyeballs on you who may not watch much tour golf or much of the women's tour golf that then became like fans of you. And you still have a following that we see a lot, like I, I just, on I the just, page, don't we? I always just felt like that straight picture. away. That's funny. That is. We'll have to, we'll have to pull we'll this, up, up, pull this on the screen for the video version. Look at Rick's hair there. <laughs> oh, look how young you look. That's a weird. <laughs> you, don't, yeah. you don't like you've changed, Carly. But you know what? I think it was just the banter. Like we're just like ourselves. That's the, the but, funny uh, thing. We don't try to be anything else. We mm. just be ourselves. But like, that's what was really me good trying with to you. put off Pete, like doing a hand snap. Yeah, that was so funny. Like, but that's just, what was really good with you straight away. You you were really well known. You had pedigree of winning. You had a following, but you also knew how to be yourself. And I think that sometimes it's quite difficult sometimes on a video. And I've I've done it with other people as well since. They like I've almost put this guard up. Like you 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 you've just always been yourself, and I think that's why people love you so much. Certainly on the videos. Um, one of the other things I always remember and I'd love to bring this up, but this is not something we've done. You obviously did also work off social media. Was it GQ magazine? 
what was the what was the naked shoot? Oh, that's ESPN. I mean, body that, issue. That's incredible that you did that. Oh, Talk us through this. Okay, so that was because you know I've always been into my fitness, and that year I'd obviously won twice, so I've obviously been kind of noticing this in a sense. So, so this was back in like 2012 or something, yeah. right? So I've obviously an inquiries come in, and I've been obviously asked about this. This is when I was with the IMG management, and you know they've asked me if if this is something I'd be you know keen to do or willing to do or interested in. And I, it kind of took me by shock a little bit because I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's a bit like I mean, like, didn't expect that. It's like naked, like naked, naked, or just <laughs> just like so. I, I mean, I think, like I said, I'm only 20 at the time. But then I've kind of done a bit of research. I'm like, oh, my God, like, there's some of the most best athletes well, I, I hadn't, ever. Like, Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger have done, have done it. Done it. Harry Harry Player? I did it the same. No, I did it with Gary. Same year as Gary Player. Yeah, there's Gary. So we were the two, <laughs> we were the two golfers that year. Brooks has done it since, I believe. Yep. So describe this shoot for me. Well, <laughs> is it as glamorous as it looks or not? Because you did it at, is it at New, it, York, New York Drive? I did it in oh Chelsea God. Piers, New yeah. York on January 4th. So it was a freezing. Oh, wow. So you can imagine I was like, like, like dressing gown yeah. off on heaters. Um, I think as well, the initial like. like unveiling. Take, yeah, unveiling <laughs> was the hard part but then it's it's kind of a small group of people and then eventually it's just like whatever I've, everyone's seen you naked so yeah, i'm like, naked now yeah. so whatever. <laughs> done. Yeah, there's some greg norman pictures online that are quite revealing as well he's done it greg norman he, he was even ripped. camilla uh camilla Vigigas i think he has there's a bit of a well, trend like, though it's all the yeah. guys that are shredded that have yeah, done exactly. it i don't understand why and um, and did you find that that kind of a new audience found you obviously that's espn huge worldwide magazine like, did you find that people were now starting to follow you that maybe weren't golfers? Um, I don't know. N- don't know now. You can't measure to it. To be honest, I wouldn't know necessarily. Um, I don't look at the numbers and figures. Um, but I just f- feel that, you know, it's something I'm actually very humbled to be asked to be involved in. And, again, seeing the athletes that have done it also, it's kind of be nice to be one of those that have... Also, that's, that's what, some what, did, what did your mum and dad think about it? Well, that's the funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, during the interview of that, um, I met like I had I think about six, six. I've got six or seven tattoos. I can't remember. Um, I had at least four at that point, and um, my dad never knew I had any tattoos. He was so against them. Oh so my in my interview, goodness. it was like surprise. <laughs> <laughs> no he was way. See them. Um, I feel like your big brother would have been, or your brothers would have been very protective well, as well. The uh, thing is, I had, I remember getting one when I was really young. And I was like, just turned 18, and I got one on my foot. And I had to wear socks all the time <laughs> when I was home. And then one day I just forgot to come downstairs and put socks on. He's like, what's that on your foot? And I go, oh, it's just a sticker. Oh, thank God. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, was, it's funny you mentioned that because you're like, I love how gullible he is. <laughs> And then two years later, I'm like, yeah, it wasn't a sticker, Dad. <laughs> well, Rick's yeah, it's, book, not, it's not come off yet. <laughs> You're booked in for your tattoo this weekend, aren't you? I am, actually, Rick's yeah. got a big Man United logo on his arm. <laughs> big Man United logo. But You're a Liverpool please, fan, aren't you? Please do not tell me you're going to do that. No, yeah, I'm going to get CR7 on the back. Rick's become a huge... This is a bit of a running joke on the podcast oh, that Rick's here. become a massive United like, fan like again say now. I footy. Footy yeah, fan. Yeah, massive Liverpool fan. And there, another thing with my dad, his, his number plate's one KOP. Cop, nice. One cop. That must be worth a few quid. And his other one is W because his name's Wallace, 007 for James Bond. That's class. So, no way. I know he's put he's put them in the will. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you, you were driving in the car. Yeah. Oh, Wallace, you two Wallace, aren't selling them. <laughs> Wallace can have obviously W well, that's what, 007. This, this is the problem. Me and Wallace have a fight now because he wants one KOP. I'm like, but I can't have W07 because yeah. my name's not Wallace and your name's Wallace. Yeah, get the cop <laughs> one. Are you? Do you still follow it close in the football? Um. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say the last few weeks, but I would love to go to a few games um, this this coming Could, few months. Because you're probably with Milner, aren't you, James Milner? 
Um, well, you've done stuff. You've done videos. I, I, or know I, him. I used to come I, to your events as he just. Yeah, yeah, I went to his golf day a few times. I was possibly gonna um, join his management group when he just started, but um, I used to go to his uh, his ball, which was pretty awesome. That, but there was some um, famous people at that, right? That's where I met Klopp. Oh wow! And you two okay. Liverpool fans just chatting about Liverpool. Uh, Rick could have been loving this I conversation. Didn't know you had yeah, fans. I've actually weirdly, oh. I've got a Liverpool shirt on today. I've got the last season's goalie shirt on. Oh. You, you knew you were coming. Yeah, exactly. We uh, can be friends. <laughs> yeah, Rick's out of it. Go away. Rick, go away. <laughs> <laughs> who's the most famous golf? Who's the most famous person you've played golf with? Oh, nice. Oh, well, I didn't play around with. Well, actually, you know, the most famous week I would say would be when I was in China for this uh, an event. So I'm hitting golf balls and very friendly and sociable that week with Morgan Freeman. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that's a big name. <laughs> Sorry, that was just a, <laughs> just a name drop on the desk there. That's a, that's a name drop. You asked, you got. It literally came my, from uh, heaven. It just <laughs> dropped. My um, partner for that week was Chris Evans, Captain America. Oh, wow. And the group in front was John Daly and Jessica Alba. Oh, my God. Who we all became friends with. And Greg Norman was, like, we all had an absolute ball that week. And also, you've got probably one of the most famous people on the planet. Yeah. Getting into your DMs (laughs) and following you. He he messaged me first. Do you know their story? Is it the Trump one? Oh, we're going to come on to that in a oh, minute. Oh, that a different no, one. But okay, no, sorry, a different one. C- very cool. The, 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 right, okay. The person who should be president Can I have of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> Not The Rock. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, the Rock's Absolute playing the full rock. story now, please. How did that happen? Well, I don't know, really. Was this on Insta? <laughs> you saw the ESPN shoe. <laughs> one thing led to another. <laughs> no. was, was this on Insta? Was, on Twitter? No, on Twitter. Oh, so. come on, please get it. Have you got it on your phone still? Yeah. I'd have this framed. Right, so I don't know. In fact, was it you not your cover for a bit that he followed you? Uh, so what happened? Did he just no. follow you out of the blue? He no, I I think I well I always followed him. I've got so many then, questions. Does he still follow you? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Do you check a lot yeah. to see if he still Wait, does? We had we had some great conversations. <laughs> look at, us, look at the side so, on the messages. It's on the DMs. You're scrolling up like that. They said it's going to be YouTube. Careful, you get all these on. He followed me back, and that's what he sent me. Hi, Carly. You look beautiful today. No, <laughs> Shut <Wow>. up. <laughs> oh, so he sent you out, out the blue. He sent you a picture of him hitting golf balls. This isn't even that long ago, 2017. But what up, Carly? That you'd be proud of the skills. It's yeah. the rock hitting it. Oh, my word. So yeah, how did he... Look at this. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was out the blue. How did he... Um, wow. well, you met him? Do or? you know, he, he kind of... I think I've I've done something obviously just like adding his at mm. like a workout video or something and then i think he started that series um oh, didn't he do series? something about golf because i've ballers, seen that picture before that was it. ballers right that series that came out and i think i've posted about him like watching it adding him and he goes um, something about something you'd appreciate as athletes, Carly. That's so and cool. And then I, I've done something with me, like working out, and he goes, something like, uh, you know the drill, mama. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't following at this point, or was he? Yeah, he was after this. And then I had... Oh, my um, word. There was this, uh, the an event in America where they did this, like, vote challenge first time I, I think it's only ever really been done but it was between me and i think blair o- o'neill i remember this yeah it's yeah, a bit weird that though that, isn't it? like i don't find that really fair. did you ever remember this oh, oh, it's a bit bizarre, it, that. They, they voted for a player to play in a tournament yeah literally so the it was between i think three of us or four of us it was just a popularity contest yeah. right. but not but not in like a, a space in the lpga yeah it just an, an lpga event and um Shamila got it, being Indian, just because obviously there's about a bazillion people in India. But I've had messages from, like, another tournament I played after saying, that, you know, can you invite The Rock for the Pro-Am? And I'm like, eh. Well, because he's, he said, can you vote for my homegirl, Carly? Yeah, he, he shouted you out, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, oh I asked days. Him That's so cool. And then you did have randomly have Trump follow you. Yes, he followed me for five days. 
That's random. I was his 46 follower. That so is you, random. And have you met him before? Is that how it came about? Or? Yeah, He's obviously a big golfer. Have you met Trump? <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't say I know him, but I've met him and spoke... Very brief words. So that was a ge- do you reckon it was a genuine follow and then he just thought oh. Do you know what I think it was? It's to do with I think he follows Gary Player player and I've been at quite a lot of the Gary Player invitational, so I think it was something Ah, he's been to do with that. Tiny, tiny bit closer, sorry, Carly. Oh sorry. Bit. Um playing a lot of the Gary Player invitationals and he follows Gary Player, so I think maybe something seen there. But I played in the British Open at Turnbury, two thousand and fifteen, and that's where I met him. Um very briefly, me going up the stairs, he's going down the stairs. And did he know who you were? Did he say like... Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, How Carly. are you? <laughs> I've watched you on Rick Shields' channel. Love the videos. <laughs> I'm not doing any more impressions. Yeah, so I, got, I, got I, got sli- I got slightly last, impressions. Last week, Rick was doing a, an Irish impression. Didn't go down well. And No, it didn't go And then I think if we tried to do American and it's Trump, I think that might be too much. Yeah. I get cancelled. I can only do American and, and Scouse. Go on, let's see you, Scouse. That's murder. That's murder. <laughs> well, that That's not enough, perhaps. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, there is, I mean, obviously, when you were growing up, like, you obviously inherited a little bit of a kind of an American Well, no, that, the, the American was because of school. From school, yeah. So I, I wanted people to actually understand me. <laughs> Did you have to change your accent when you were over there? Well, yeah. I mean, I think you just adapt, don't you? When, Like, when I go hang around with Scottish people, the Scottish comes out. Of course. When I'm in a, when I'm in Manchester, like you're like you know what I mean, like <laughs> all the Mancunian comes out, and then obviously with my family, like my mum's like, Ah oh, Maureen, Ah oh, Elaine, like you know she just it's like kind of just depends who you're around. I think mm. I just my my she's from is she from Liverpool? Fluc- yeah, your mum fluctuates my my to, accent. Do you have sure. a question? Or do you want to do a couple of I want to come to some questions in a minute. So, obviously, still playing at the moment. Do you see what takes place in the future? Like, is is there goals and ambitions and drive that you see Carly doing that's not in golf, let's say? Or if it is in golf, it's not playing golf? That's uh, a big question. I think that's a lot of what I've been kind of thinking of, to be honest. You know, I've just had a shoulder operation, so... As well, I'm kind of thinking long term too. Whereas I still want to keep playing, yeah. but I also want to put myself in a place where you know, when that day stops, I can just go into something else. Yeah. Not you think, then you think, think it's still being golf? Um, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think you'd I would be, be a pre- horrific. Be a good presenter. I would be a bad coach, though. Be a so. good presenter. Well, I'm going to do some more um, media training. So that's probably something I'm going to do over the next kind of year. I, th- I always think presenters that have an insight to what it's like on tour. It, it's easy to talk about what you know. Mm. And and also, you'll know some of the golfers. You might get a little bit more out of them, let's say. They, they might say things that they'd say to you that they might not say to a yeah. non-golf you know, commentator. I think that's why kind of Nick Doherty always does so it's well. Really, yeah. I own yeah. Stephen and Incy and, you know, I think because they've got that pedigree, I've been out here, done it with you girls or fellas or whatever. You know, you can, you're all right, you're all right with me. You can chat yeah. to me. Do you know what I mean? I think you'd be great at that. And that's a great thing about, you know, even playing the Evian Masters, um, the major just played uh, this year. I had Simon Dyson, you know, a former top 25 in the world on the back for the first time. His, you know, he's gone into the coaching side, but he's never never caddied before. Yeah. And he's like, this is going to be such a great insight to be on the other side. Of course. And, you know, he's like, I want selfie with uh, Padiko. And really? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Calm down. I know, yeah. <laughs> Calm down, Simon. <laughs> what, um, is, he, is he coach at currently, Simon? Yeah, he's uh, based, based mainly at Matra Mall. Yeah. But he's your coach? Um, Not necessarily, but, you know, it's, you know, potentially. Do you, do you um, have, but do you, from, from from what he's for for recent, it's more of like the insight. I love to chat to him because of, you know, it's not necessarily about the swing; it's about the mindset. Like he's just got so much knowledge, and I think, I think that's the thing. It's not always technique; it's no. it's the mindset. So when you know what you're doing, like I know when I'm hitting badly, I kind of already know what I'm doing wrong. He's more of a performance coach. And I think that's more beneficial to especially the higher player. Of course. Of, um, well, the higher level of player because 
You know well, how to hit a golf ball. We all know how, yeah, yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? You know how to hit it. You know how to manage a golf ball around a golf course. It's doing it in certain situations. It's doing it when you might not be feeling your best. It's doing it when, you know, you've had a bad start or whatever it may be. And it's even like little insights of just, you know, something that he's learned. Of course. Which, it, like, something about, like, I've I've been struggling with, like, that 80, 60 to 80 yard bunker shot. Yeah. And, you know, he's like, well, I learned this, someone, you know, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that, yeah. you know, so it's just like these little things that it's not necessarily you don't know how to play it, but how do you have a var- variety or how can you make it easier for yourself? Of course. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's been really insightful. So you'll have a little bit more time off this year, obviously, with the shoulder. Yeah, I'm. Uh, well, I withdrew from the second round of my last event. Um, I'm going to take a few weeks off, and I'm I'm going to see where I'm at because uh, it's just not 100 percent there yet, and I yep. don't want to force uh, uh, an operation, no. and I want to make sure it's not a long term yeah, problem. Yeah, right thing to do, definitely. You hear you hear about so much people coming back, don't they? Too early, yeah, too and it's just more yeah. damage than it's worth. Got some questions? Yeah. Well, yeah so. Um, we have a Facebook group, Carly, and for listeners that don't know, um, obviously on Facebook, it's just literally called the Rick Shields Golf Show. So if you want to join, go in a little search bar on Facebook, the Rick Shields Golf Show is like 65,000 members now. It's getting Ooh. up there. It's good. Um, there's a chat about the podcast, chat about just general. We have a lot of people posting the first ever holding one picks, but I love seeing it. People seem to get a lot of holding ones. 60,000 people. So it's it's probably like a one a day, statistically. What's the one, though? What's the odds one in, I don't know. I'm sure it's over 100,000. So yeah, it's one every couple of and days. And then there's um, a lot of people like they post pictures of like the scorecard, like today I broke hundred for the first time or broke ninety, and we love seeing that as well. Yeah, sometimes great. a little bit of thanks to Rick for watching the videos. Only, only sometimes. That's if guy accepts them ones. Yeah, I have power, so I just decline. I don't want to give any more credit. <laughs> but anyway, um, we said on there that you were coming on, and you got a great reception. You'll be glad to know. Um, loads of people did excited to hear from you, but. We had loads and loads of questions. I was going to only pick a few, and we've been going for over an hour already. We have. That time has flown. So I've just picked out some of the really good ones. Um, this one's from Mark Thomas. It's a bit kind of standard, but I'm really keen to hear your... Uh, no offence, Mark. I'm not. It's like something you ask a lot of times, but what's your dream for, Ball? Oh, I think it, it kind of changes like, quite often. I remember getting asked this many, many years ago, but if I'm going to be completely honest, at this moment in time, it would be... The Rock, Gary Player, and Tiger Woods. That's a good one. Don't That'd be close to yours, about, wouldn't it, Rick? You wouldn't be far Although off Although I that. would quite like to play with Mark Wahlberg, too. Yeah. Uh, I th- it'd I be a five ball. It would be a five ball. I think I'd go Tiger, Will Smith, Rock. Oh, that's a good could one. it be a six ball? You, you could have him on your bag. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can have a caddy. And then e- each one can, of the players can, one of them have can a have a caddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this one's a good one from Kevin Rands. He said, can you ask about her golf fitness program? I'm guessing he's obviously a follower on your Insta because you've done a lot on there about your fitness, but does she think it could help benefit, uh, could it help and benefit amateurs as well as the pros? Massively. Big thing. You know, I'm part of um, um, an app which you should follow and subscribe is Golf Watt. So it's about enhancing your fitness levels to to make your golf game better. As an athlete growing up, like I know, for example, I wouldn't be as good at golf if I didn't have such a good physical background mm-hmm. with my gymnastics, hand-eye coordination, my, my, I think as well, people don't realize how much a f- your physical fitness really like helps your mental strength, especially if you're out there for like five, six hours a day. And I know like if I'm physically fit, I'm less likely to get tired. Mm. And then that's when your your game tends to drop. So if you're physically fit, I feel like that's only going to be positive in your in yourself as mm. well. So that's golf, W-A-D? Yes. W- is it A-D what? or what? W-O-D? W-O-D. The workout W-O-D. of the day. It's like a CrossFit thing. Um, a good question from Matthew Baldwin. I don't think it's the golf of Matthew Baldwin, but best way to get my young daughter into golf do you have any tips from like a, don't know, from more, because obviously you've given some good advice, Rick, when your daughters, but maybe from more obviously a, a female's perspective and the fact you were a junior golfer, what what would you say? I mean, I don't know where he's based necessarily, but I think just starting in maybe grip sessions, like younger grip sessions. I mean, not necessarily going out on the golf course, but going on like maybe a pitch and putt mm. or just to the driving range, just get a feel. I think that's the the, the best way to just kind of 
start yeah. and then see where you go from there. I, I've started to see more and it, it's I, I think I always used to kind of almost turn my nose up to it a little bit and I'm I, I'm wrong and I'm happy to say it. I just think crazy golf and, and like mini golf plays such an important part for getting kids into golf. Well, did I tell you I went to pitch and put last week? I don't think yeah, I said on the did. So I went last week, me and my wife went to St. Anne's, you know, the little seaside town. Yeah. And there's like an actual pitch and put at the beach, but it's like crazy. quite good. There was some holes like 30 yards. There was some like 100 yards. And we went and had a little game. And I actually genuinely, hand on heart, enjoyed it as much as I would enjoy playing proper golf because yeah. it was still like, like I said, decent little holes. There was not like loads of pressure. We weren't playing the proper rules. And it was just really fun. And you think like when you grow up, which I did, which I'm grateful for, like playing golf, the only negative to that is you see it very much as you have to play 18 holes, you have to play properly, you can't move your ball up on a bad lie because you want to play it kind of by the book. But equally, there's so many more ways of playing golf, certainly for youngsters that can just be fun, that don't have to be that kind of linear 1 to 18. Yeah, I honestly think mini golf or crazy golf play, plays such a part. Just as an introduction... And then it's driving ranges, it's group classes, as you say, Carly. It's something that just, they understand, the kid knows, that's a golf ball, that's a golf club, that's a golf hole. Mm. Well, whatever combination happens after that doesn't really matter. And also, I think, like, it doesn't have to be 18 holes. I think, especially at that age, it should be, like, five hole competitions. Mm. Because, yeah. do you know what? 18 holes takes a long time. It's a, it's a, it's a long period of time. So it's got to be short. And, and you know, because I think, like, at that age, you kind of you know, your mind goes and you lose interest quite quickly. So it's got to be fun and quick. Well, you you so wouldn't... You mean Rick's quick six? Rick's, yeah, well, the, yeah, yeah. We joke, but you wouldn't put... For at the moment. You wouldn't give a group of under seven footballers full-size pitch in 90 minutes, would you? No. no. They just wouldn't laugh, they wouldn't enjoy it. They have smaller goals, smaller teams. Like, everything's smaller, in it? And it's more kind of palatable. Yeah. A um, quick one before I come on to the last question from the audience. We've, we're a similar age and we've probably been playing golfer similar amount of time, although you've obviously done a hell of a lot more than I ever have. Although I have got over there, if you look at the little trophy behind you, the Tiger Woods bobblehead, that trophy on the left is from when I won the Hurlston Hall Junior Open putting comp in 2002. So there. So there. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. The, sa the, same, um, the same year you were won three club champions. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Literally was do the you, same year. Do you say this on every podcast? Yeah, and I've also got my 2004 <laughs> Junior Order of Merit as well there. So He, 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 likes, he likes to flex It's now because there's been comments before saying, well, what are guys' credentials? You know, Rick's a PJ Pro with nearly 2 million subscribers. Well, there's my fucking credentials. Um, <laughs> so I have that. But, yeah. But anyway... Um, Again, we so we've been playing golf a similar amount of time. When I was growing up, I was quite nervous that golf wasn't cool. And a story I've probably told before in the podcast, I remember getting a lift home from the golf club with mum and dad, getting out my clubs out of the car, and the public bus would go past. They might have youngsters on who've been playing out or whatever. And I would panic that they're going to see me with my set of golf clubs. I really would. And I'd like run in the house or almost hide a little bit because I didn't want to get ridiculed in school, which sounds mad to even say now. But I do think golf has changed massively. Do you, do you see that as well? I mean, I don't know how you felt as a, as a young girl playing golf, but do you feel like golf has become cool and it's more kind of accepted as well? Massively. Like, I've seen a big change since I was a kid. Like, I was, you know, I didn't really have time for friends, to be honest, but I didn't think it was cool, but I just, I think that was the pushing or, you know, the, the support of obviously having my older brother play, um and my family and you know having the farm at home so like i didn't really have to go anywhere i could come home and practice mm. no one has to see me have you got golf holes at you at the yeah, farm yeah we have like 15 15, 15 holes? holes yeah <laughs> oh my word so you got a golf course basically i mean you can see all the holes and like from the first tee like how long how long are they uh, like some are like over 300, well, two are like 350 yards, no. but you can go from tea to different greens. So some can be really short or really long. But who maintains it? Well, it's a little bit out of use now because I, mean, yeah. I haven't lived there for ages and my dad's kind of struggling a bit, but he used to cut grass every day. That's all he did. Oh my, that, that's unreal. 15 holes at home. Yeah. No wonder you were a tall pro. Exactly. That's why, why I never was. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And the last question I've got is a really good one again um, from Stuart Smith. He said, what do you think about the current crop of young golfers coming through? Uh, some of the young women that played in the Curtis Cup were outstanding, he said. Well, I mean, I don't, like, being one of the younger ones when I turned pro, and I was saying this to you earlier, I never really kind of looked behind me. Mm -hmm. But now, like, I've seen, all, like, Obviously, getting involved, especially with like d disability golf, um, the European Disability Golf Association, as well as Scottish golf, um, I've seen a lot, and and then also 
seen how much how we want to make this easier and more accessible to youngsters. But then I've seen like um, uh, Duncan. What's Louise uh, Duncan? Louise you mentioned Duncan, before, yeah. Like how amazing she played in the British Open. This oh, movie. phenomenal! She's Scottish as well, isn't she? Yeah. And I was like, geez, you know what? I that just made my day to see that there are like whatever we're trying to achieve and and um, see like make a a trend for girls younger than us to to start making golf their way of life and what they want to do and and their career that this is we're seeing it now which is good if yeah. you had a sat if you had to sit down with louise now she's just kind of starting her say that. Question. career what kind of advice would you give her you know i actually um yeah i know kind of what i'd say which would be the same thing i actually said charlie hall sat me down once when she just started when we were in turkey she asked me that kind of similar question, like, how do you win? Yeah. And I mean, like, I mean, come on, she's played Solheim and she's won many times. She's been out and, like, I mean, she's an absolute star. But it's funny, like, in some ways, like, you don't really, you, ha- you know, you know, and you have an answer, but everyone's very different. Of but course. I just know for a fact, it's you just got to keep enjoying it. Yeah. That's the main fact. And also, like use your time wisely yeah and also like listen listen to whatever advice that you hear what you get given and then use it to your advantage you know you don't have to take everyone's advice but figure out what's best for you would you advise her to pursue a social media i think that's Part of that is it's a good thing to be more known and and I'm sure that's the way a lot of sponsors kind of want that route of, you know, using their image and and whatever that is to promote promote what they want. But you've got to think of yourself first and make sure you're you're your priority yeah. and make sure you you know what it's more even the team around you yeah make sure you have the right team around you that's a good point and oh. that's the thing with social media like <clears throat> i would probably without question go oh yeah absolutely do social media like you'd be daft not to but then you could also i could also say don't bother with well, it let I mean. your team do it and focus on your golf that's you don't what hear I mean. nonsense. I, I, but i live in that bubble again where if you're out on tour all the time and, you, and you're playing in tournaments have you got time to be distracted by social media like do you actually need but, it or can, like say can your management look after the, the it the thing or? is though we live in a world in what we do in where number like followers matter likes matter views matter it's what we do if you're a golfer you might be a bit interested but where you finished last week matters yeah. how you're improving your putting matters like how you finish this week matters you followers don't see can, it as, as almost like a, a a broader business strategy on the yeah. side that just plugs in that you can go oh i did this in the event oh my instagram also made me a few thousand this it's week. like patch as you've ever looked now patrick cantley won last week obviously how much did he win was it 15 million dollars something like that and I'm using this term loosely, but he's only got um, how many followers? Well, I'm going to guess. I reckon. I reckon not many more over a hundred thousand. He's got seventy five thousand. So, but does is he going to give a toss? It's more of how I think it's more of your mental strength too, because whatever positivity comes with social media, there's so much negativity. Sure. So, if you can be able to weigh up both and not care so much of the negative then go for it with the social media but if that's gonna make you feel depressed or it's gonna start to oh my god have i lost followers or um oh, i've not played well this week or people or are gonna, some, some troll said something tro- nasty yeah, to me people are, gonna say, <laughs> people are gonna say something nasty to me because i didn't play well this week i mean if that's your thought process you i don't mean need, that's not healthy you don't need it and you can even like even on tour play you can almost get Oh, you walk past me and didn't give me a signature today. I hate you now. Yeah. You know, even things that are almost like yeah, I wouldn't bother. <laughs> it almost get you so like I don't know. You, you'd go to the next day and have after have a pitch with everybody because you'd be thinking, oh god, I don't want to upset anybody. <laughs> I could imagine. Or there'll be a keyboard warrior like this, and then when they see, oh, can I have a picture, a big fan? Like, oh yeah. If Rick woke up tomorrow and suddenly got a European tour card. And you're playing on the European tour on a Sunday. I'll caddy for you. <laughs> Carly's in the bag. You're walking down the 18th, you're about to win. He's thinking, 
Oh, what's my Instagram caption going to be? Well, I would. I've, I've been thinking. <laughs> Next thing he shanks it and loses. <laughs> I, I need to get a banger Instagram if we're going to win this. It's okay, I'll help you. <laughs> um, well, Carly, you've been a pleasure. Um, I think we've covered pretty much everything. I think that was excellent. I think there's definitely a part two in the future, though. We've got so much more I think we can go over and, yeah. and how you're getting on with your golf and stuff. But for today, that's good to pick sick. it back up next year when you're fully fit and fighting again and back out on tour and killing it. We want to see more Carly Booth wins, and I'm sure you do too. I certainly do. Um, everybody, make sure you do follow Carly. Thanks for listening to episode number 96, and uh, we'll see you next week. Five star review on Apple would always be nice as well. If you want to. Don't have to. I think Carly deserves it. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for Carly for coming in. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kai. Ta-ha. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> see you soon. Bye. Thanks, That's Matt. Very good. Thanks, Matt. <laughs>